Here we are. Awesome. It's like November, but it's not. I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank here at saltwateraquarium.com headquarters doing our first ever happy hour hour with yours truly and some of the crew uh, here at saltwateraquarium.com. I'm going to have Greg back with us tonight. Those of you that watched our live stream during Thanksgiving, you knew that Greg was full of really interesting and hard to get trivia questions. Well, we got some of those tonight. We got some stuff to give away. We're actually going to have a live drawing, not like raffle tri trivia, raffle ticket drawing. Greg's going to do some art with us. For those of you that come to our, that come to Reef Palooza, Aquashella, you've seen our booth. Well, we can't be with you, so Greg's going to be doing his drawing tonight. That we'll give away as well. So, first things first. President's Day is Monday, and. We're doing a President's Day sale, but we're not waiting until Monday. It's actually live now. 10% off all non-MAP items right now on our website, saltwateraquarium.com. President's Day sale is up and live. Now, a little disclaimer here, a couple things. Usually we get your orders out to you first day if you make the cutoff. And for the most part, we were going to be doing that as much as possible. We've got a couple of things kind of blowing against us in terms of headwinds on this one. Number one, a lot of the carriers actually all the carriers are overloaded with lots of packages from COVID. Also, we got four inches of snow last night. We got more snow coming over the weekend. So there may be some weather delays with pickups as well. But go ahead and get your order in. We'll get it out the door as fast as we possibly can. And sometimes we pack it up, but then the carriers can get us. But nonetheless, it will get to you. Saltwaterkern.com all weekend long, 10% off all non-MAP items going on. So there you go. Let's kick off happy hour. Everyone likes a discount with that sale. All right. One thing I said that we're going to be doing tonight is Greg, our fantastic customer service person. If you've ever called, you've talked to Greg or you've talked to Liz, you've talked to Greg. He is always at the trade shows when we have a booth at the show doing some live drawings. You can bring your kiddos over. He does some drawings with glow pens and some UV lights. It's really fun. Well, we can't do any trade shows. We didn't do any last year. Hopefully, we'll get to do some this year. We're not with you all live in terms of at a show tonight. But we're Greg's going to do a drawing for us. The thing is, this is an interactive type of happy hour. I'm not just going to talk at you all the time. We got to hear some things from you all. So, what do you want Greg to draw? Now, let's keep it PG rated. There's probably kids on the live stream. I know my kids are watching. And let's keep it saltwater related. So, what do you want Greg to draw? Let's populate some answers there. There's Greg. How's it going, Greg? Say hi. Hi. How's it going? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'll draw anything and everything. Uh, this is yeah. true. You should see some of the stuff. I mean, you know, for this, because we're here and it's just one and done. Yeah, sure, something saltwatery, fish, whatever related is great. Um, but at the shows, yeah, man, I, I do a lot of dog drawings. Dog drawings dogs. at a fish show? So many dogs. And people want uh, portraits of their kids. Now, I can do that. But no. <laughs> yeah, no. At least it's I've not a cat done. drawing. I've had cats attacking tanks and catfish and dogfish and you name it. My favorite drawing ever was a someone wanted a hammerhead getting hammered. So I had a hammerhead, double fist and some beers. No, oh. double fist and beers, man. A hammerhead getting hammered. Come on, guy, drink your beer. We got any good it's ideas? Happy hour. Any good ideas there, Kay Brown? Some of them, let me know what you think. What um, we got? Give me some ideas, Kenneth. There's multiple ideas for pirate ship. A pirate, or a pirate ship. Hey, it's International Pirate Talk Like a Pirate Day. Oh, that's September. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. In September. September. So call in, I think September 21st. I'm going to talk like a pirate all day. All right, it'll be great. A boxing clownfish. Oh. A green sea turtle. Boxing. Boxing clownfish. I got a boxing clownfish. Right Go. Here. All right. So, right, go ahead and keep on talking while we get started here. <laughs> all right. Greg's going to get started. We're going to roll through our happy hour tonight. All right. First thing, let's do a little recap what we have going on over on our YouTube and our Facebook channels. We have three video series. Now, those of you that said, hey, Mark, what happened to your YouTube channel? I don't see you on YouTube anymore. Where have you been? Because I've almost done as many videos for saltwateraquarium.com as I've done for myself. So I do three videos, count them, one, two, three videos a week over here at saltwateraquarium.com. First one on Tuesday mornings is our React series. So this is a lot of fun. You send me videos of your tank, and then I look over your, the video and I critique it live. I'm looking at the video, giving you my feedback. Now, let's put a little disclaimer on this. I caught a little bit of heat recently from people saying, oh, you're, you're being too critical of people's tanks. Is that the point? This not meant, okay, let me just say this. Criti criticism is different than feedback. 
If you're being critical, I mean, that's being harsh, saying things that are unfounded. If you're being giving feedback to something, it's like, hey, maybe you could do this differently. You could change that. Maybe you call that more politically correct. So there's a difference. The point is for me to get on there and critique things. Say, hey, I see this. Maybe you think about doing this. I like this. It's not to be critical. Certainly don't get on there and say, hey, your setup sucks. There's lots of different setups we profiled from DIY, low budget, to high-end type systems. The point is, this is driven by you guys and gals. We'd love to see some systems from some lady reefers as well. I know sometimes they're few and far between. And then film your tank. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. If you got cords everywhere, that's cool because you know what? Sometimes tanks look that way like ours. We got ours under construction here. I've been working on it today. Point is, show me what you got. It's fun to see all the different setups because there's lots of different tanks in the saltwater tank hobby. A softy tank can be just as beautiful as an SPS heavy baller type tank. Hey Mark, I have a really nice soft tank at home. Can I take a video of my tank and have you critique it on saltwateraquarium.com? Or you can just have me over for a beer. Or come over for a beer, but yeah. We'll do my tank. I got a little nano tank at home. You guys want to see a nano tank? We're going to film mine and Mark will come over. Let's we'll do it. it out. We'll do my tank. The point is, this is driven by you all. Send us your videos. If you don't know anything about this, go to saltwateraquarium.com slash reacts. Talks about the series and there's a form there. Put in your basic information. Then we're going to touch you about getting the, info, the video of your tank. Again, if you don't have a baller tank, if you have a nano tank, if you have a large tank that's DIY, that's fine. We want to see all different types of setups to show people that, you know what, there's lots of different ways to have success in this hobby. I've had baller tanks. I've had basic tanks. Some of them have been great. Some of them haven't been so great. Either way, I still had a saltwater tank, and I still got to enjoy it, and we hope you're doing that as well with your tanks. Now, on Thursdays, we have our nano slash office tank series. We understand a lot of you at working from home now, why not put some salt water in your office? One great way to do that is with a nano type tank. So we've got four different nano tanks that we profile in the series. Just did a show today about cleanup crews. So if you missed that, go back and check in on that series on Thursdays. And Saturday morning, by request, the Friday morning quick tips I used to do on my channel have been moved to Saturday morning quick tips over here on saltwateraquarium.com. Short, quick, digestible videos. Quick tip for you, for you and your tank on a Saturday morning. You wake up in whatever state you may wake up in, and you got some quick information, digestible information going on. So we got three video series a week happening over here on saltwateraquarium.com on a range of topics. Speaking of, let's get some more feedback from you guys and gals. What video series would you like to see us do? Would it be a controller series? Would you like us to look at some of the new controllers coming out? Maybe something more basic. We did budget reef keeping about a, what, two years ago now, Ken? Two years ago-ish um, that we've done. So look, let's hear some ideas. Throw them out. We'd love to read, we read the comments. So throw us some ideas. What would you like to see? Now, let's take a look at this clown fish that Greg's working on here. Let's get a close up. I'm going to turn into camera op mode here. We have a super chat from Rico's Aquarium. Just gave us five bucks. Rico! Keep it up. Rico! What up, Rico? Rico's Roughneck. Rico's Roughneck. Oh, yeah. That's a mean looking clownfish. Well, you said boxing, so he's uh, a box. <laughs> he's a box. I need to drink a beer. Hmm. A box. People are asking where do you send the videos. Do you remember the URL? Yes, mrsaltwatertank.com slash reacts. How about saltwateraquarium.com? Is that what I just said? No, you said Mr. Saltwater. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Saltwaterquarium.com slash reacts. Well, you do own the business according to a lot of our viewers. Yeah, I missed that part somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says, we love your business. It's not mine. I just work here. All right. So Greg's working on our uh, boxing box clownfish. A, box. a lot of people are asking, are we actually having cocktails? Uh, Victory Brewing Company. It's many a monkey. I have the no-brainer. I've also had a sour monkey and a couple others. This is the golden monkey. This is 9.5% alcohol by volume. Mark's Uber Mark's I, I, I may it. start to sound a little different by the end of the broadcast because I have one wheat beer and I'm like, whoa, this is 9.5. All right. Will Kent just shared the URL. Thanks, Will. All right, Mr. Kent. Will Laser Kent. Yeah, Laser B. The man. All right. Greg, it's now to your part where you, oh. yeah, this is where oh. you weigh out the rock. Oh, I got to start this for sure. All right. So one, I'm going to stop drawing because I got to weigh out rock. One thing that you we get questions about all the time is, say, hey, 
I ordered 10 rocks on their website <laughs> and I show up and there's 12 of them. Here's the thing, on the rocks you're ordering by pound. So if you put in quantity 10, we're gonna weigh out 10-ish pounds of rock because the rocks don't come in exactly in one pound increments. So to show you how this works, I'm gonna turn it over to the coworker, Greg, who's gonna do the rock demo. Rock demo. Alrighty, folks. So yeah, like Mark was saying, and we, we, we've explained it, we've written it out. When you order, you're ordering by the pound. Well, we, some listings, not all listings. The majority of listings is by the pound. Like uh, Carib C comes packed to us in 40 pound boxes. So if you order a 40 pound box, you're getting the, that, that box. 20 pound, we're gonna weigh that one out. A lot of folks, I wanna say it, I mean, 20 a day, 10 pounds of rock. You are not ordering 10 rocks. There's no way. That's what your LFS is for. That's why, you know, that's why your LFS is great. Patronize your local fish store, get there, check it out, you know, get their rock and stuff from them, sure. But if you're shopping online, no retailer does WYSIWYG. No one does what you see, what you get rock. We get rocks in giant, what is it, 5,000 pounds for a Gaylord? 3,500 Gaylord. 3,500 pounds usually for a Gaylord, a giant pallet with a crazy cardboard box filled with about 3,500 pounds of rock. They're all unique in size, shape, and weight. This is the same thing I tell folks every week on email, chat, or phone. So we're going to weigh it out by weight. So 10 pounds is real common. We're going to take a box. Let's weigh out 10 pounds rock. So, and everyone's like, uh, how many rocks is that? Honest to God, I, there is no estimate. Sometimes you get a rock, you know, you order a 40 pound box, you're gonna have three rocks, you're gonna get a 25 pound rock. Um, I'm gonna be getting some of our money saver. Uh, it's great rock, it's white, it's natural culture and all, but it's, uh, it has a lot of power. So whenever I pack it or when our good buddy Jay, who's usually your large packer item, uh, Jay Baru, he's gonna be back there doing your tents, your rocks every day, a lot of your salt. Um, it's real powdery, so we like to seal off the edges of the box, or otherwise you're gonna have just a mess in the truck, a mess in your front porch, in your house, whatever. Should be nice and sealed on the edges there. It's rock. Um, all rock can be fragile. We pack you nice rock. It leaves here in great condition. You know, drivers, carriers, they're overworked, they're just, they're understaffed at all. We cannot control if your rock gets broken and no carrier will cover a damage claim. That's another one I get a lot too. My rock came broken. It's leaving here nice. If your rock gets broken, please reach out to us. We need photos, we need to see the damage. We'll do a damage claim and stuff. Our uh, associate Liz handles a lot of that. Um, but yeah, we don't just replace your rock. We can't, because no one covers it. Um, but we'll help you out. There's a couple different ways we do that. So, um, but it's going to leave here nice. So, a box, it's rock. I'm going to pat it out. Um. Put some paper in your box. Some rocks come pre packed with uh, styrofoam peanuts, things like that, some different papers and all. But we're still, me or Jay or Steve who works here, we're all adding extra padding to that box because you didn't buy broken rock. You shouldn't get broken rock. If it gets broken, hit me up, I'll help you out. So rock in the, or so paper in a box. We do weigh it. So, nice standard scale, turn it around. We use this, we usually do a lot of, I mean we do, 100 plus rock quarters a day. So this is going, we're not adding this to your weight. This is 1.6 pounds. Gonna zero it out. We're at zero with our scale. Uh, we do check our scales every couple months and all, make sure they're doing fine. We, you know, we will weigh the same rock in all the different scales in the warehouse because we usually overpack rock a little bit. So again, it comes in huge Gaylords. Like I've got a huge box of rock over here. I'm gonna pack 10 pounds of rock. So I mean, I'm getting powder. I mean, this stuff, again, like that powder, you know, it's all over the place. So here's a rock. That's 8.6 pounds. You ordered 10 pounds of rock. We're not just going to put that in the box. We'll grab a little more and we try to find a small couple. We know what's in there. Different chunks. Let's see. That's probably close. Oh my God. Oh, look at that. The money. 10.0. Bam. So I mean, 10 pounds of rock. Is this every 10 pound rock order? Absolutely not, but you're usually looking at a rock or two every single week. Someone emails, I ordered 10 rocks. 
No, you didn't. You ordered 10 pounds of rock. So, um, JFM, JMF Aquatics has a, a good point. He what's says, this point? I don't know what justifies a broken rock. A broken rock is just a smaller rock. There's that. Um, real reef rock is, so this is the money saver rock. Um, we've got a marker rock that's a lot like this. Uh, broken rock, a lot of times it's real reef. Uh, it's lovely rock. It's man-made rock. It's cultured in ocean vats. So you get encrusted, you get shells, you get cool little things. They take it out of those vats, cure it, dry it, and uh, red, or red purpley coat it. It is a little bit fragile, so we definitely pad that one nice. That can sometimes come pretty broken up. We also sell uh, shapes and branches and turbina cups, shelves, all these different things by a lot of different companies. Those become broken. Usually it's not this, but oh, oh yeah, sometimes like, I have broken rocks. Yep. You have broken rock. What do you want me to do, man? You know what I'm going to do about it? Finish my beer. Here's the thing, though. When I'm aquascaping tanks, I get all different types of rocks. I get big rocks, I get small rocks, and even some of the big rocks that come to me on a freight pallet, which is going to have a gentle ride than rocks that's going to come in a box, I save all those little fragments because they're very useful. I will grab the little fragments, put them in a pile by themselves. I can sometimes wedge them under larger rocks. I want to keep something stable. So even if your larger rock breaks into smaller pieces, you can still do a lot of it with aquascaping. If you look at the tank behind me, it's got large pieces, it's got small pieces. I get a variety. So just ordering large rocks, even if you come in with some small ones or some medium ones, even the rubble, it's all useful. Here's another insider tip. I take the rubble, the really small stuff in the bottom of the... The boxes, you know, rocks that are about the size of a quarter, I put them in the bottom of my sump, bottom of my refugium, get it populated with bacteria and pods, and then I put it in new builds, but I'm building it for clients. You can use that to seed your buddy's tank, seed your frag tank, or you want to take those rocks, put them up in your display, your fish that eat the pods and the other fun stuff that's down in your refugium or sump but not in your display, they're going to thank you for it. Nice. I, I, rub, rubble too. I mean, these come again to those couple thousand pound gaylords rock breaks down. We sell rubble we, and we sell tons of that. It's usually by 10 pound increments, um, but uh, money saver rock, rubble, real reef rubble, dragonstone rubble. Dragonstone. dragonstone. My, my son would love, I got to take some home. There you go. We can do it. Um, also, so like, you know, you get a big rock. I mean, this is almost 10 pounds. Once, what do I do? This is too big. Bust Same it up. We do. I mean, you can throw it. Smash um, it. A lot of times, like, you know, especially if it's a 10 pounder, we're going to break things. Try to get you some smaller, but like, you know, hammer and chisel, it's going to break that stuff up. So in the box, some more paper. Make sure it's padded nice. Because also you don't want that box to collapse on you. Your invoice, seal it up, and off she goes too. So I mean, you, oh, I can't wait to see all the rock in there. If there's that big one and one small one, maybe. Who knows? Three rocks, four. It's by the pound. pound. Thank you for shopping at saltwaterburn.com. All right. Great. Awesome. I'm going to keep drawing. Keep drawing. 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 Let's have a fun trivia cover. All right. If you remember, doing drawings is from, say in the comments, $25 gift certificate on me. Okay. We'll randomly pick one of the winners who gets it right. What was. No, you can't give it. Oh, yep. is that too much? That's all they get. It's like the jingle. Draw like rings. to draw rings. If you know what that's from, leave it in the comments. $25 saltwatercorn.com card. On me, that way the boss doesn't freak out. The boss is bringing me a rock. Dragonstone, because folks, someone. Oh, Dragonstone. What Dragonstone. That's Stone what it is. It's for freshwater. Burn. I was gonna say. <laughs> that's a Dragonstone. But hey, for your freshwater people, there you go. That's a Dragonstone. All right. One thing that we do here at SaltwaterAquarium.com that people really love, you guys and gals watching, is freebies. We have freebies at different levels of purchases. So if you spend $100, we have freebies that if you spend 100 bucks, then you can choose a freebie from the $100 level. And a lot of times people miss that. But after their order is over, they're like, oh, I forgot my freebie order. Oh, I didn't know you could get Who freebies. They, contact when that happens? they call Gray. Oh my God, every day. <laughs> now, to give you a demo on how you add a freebie, as well as you can check out some of the cool freebies that we have in the different levels, by the way, we're working on a new one that I came up with this morning when I couldn't sleep that I think is totally awesome. We're going to turn it over to the man, the founder of the company, the actual owner, because it's not me. <laughs> True. Kay Brown, he's going to walk you through on the website how you choose, right, how you browse, how you choose, and how you add a freebie to your cart so you make sure that you capitalize 
and get more for your money here at stillwaterfirm.com. Right. All right. There you go. There is adding a freebie to your cart. We get all kinds of cool freebies. Like if you like the pint glass, that's a freebie. Oh, you want to go through some? Yeah. Why don't you show off a couple? Because you know, Another ICP test. Another one. Ooh, the drawing is done. Is done? You want to zoom in? Yeah. Because that, that way it'll be in the blue. Greg said he's done. Oh, pretty much it. Yeah, so uh, the drawings, they don't look a whole heck of a lot in the light. You're like, eh. But once we go under blue light, you know, any of your standard aquarium lights, it's going to glow real nice. A lot of times with these shows, too, um, they're given away, or we usually try to have it at our booth. Yeah, it's kind of funky in there. No, um, I got it. I'll turn off the studio lights. Each, yeah, looks weird. We couldn't have audio. We didn't have audio during the. No audio during what? Okay. I'm not really get it. So it looks a lot better in person. How about that? Um, can we kill the overhead light entirely, just real quick? I just did. Or is that gonna fuzz out? There right. you go. Look, look at that. Oh, 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 right, right there. Uh, so it glows. You know, I'm I'm using highlighters, gel pens, things like that. Um, you stand in my line, and it's this has become kind of a constant now. And no joke, the average is about an hour and a half wait. <laughs> We're going to try something new this year. It's not going to be free at the shows coming up. It was always free before. We're going to try maybe some new stuff here uh, to try to dissuade that line wait because some folks are like, Rrr. but I mean, and it's all day. It's all day. So you get your shit dry, slap a sticker on it, sign it for you, and say thank you so much for waiting in that ridiculous line. For a goofy thing like when you tell me a boxing clownfish, I'm gonna make a boxy clownfish. 
Um, oh, my favorite drawing I did that really ticked the lady off. She laid in the line all day and she wanted a tang. So I drew a jar of tang with fins and everybody in the line laughed and she was not amused. Sorry, random lady, but thanks for waiting in my line. Um, I'm going to read through the comments, check things out now as we go through, and I'm going to uh, I'll give that away to someone with a funny comment or something. So write me something that makes me laugh. I'll pick somebody and I'll give that drawing away, uh, and we'll get it out of there. So, hey, that's me. Mark, it's back to you, man. I'm getting off camera. For the moment. For the moment. For the moment. Trivia. Just trivia. That's right. We do have, for those of you that watched the extremely entertaining, that also had lots of giveaways, by the way, Thanksgiving live stream we did it back in November. We had Greg trivia, a couple of Greg trivia questions in each one, and we're going to bring that back now. They're not trivia questions this time around. Or do we have one? Oh, I got three trivia questions. Well, you got three trivia questions. Are they Christmas trivia? None. Okay. So they're not, they're not Christmas trivia because it's not Christmas time anymore. So we're doing that again tonight. Those of you that requested it, thanks for the request. We're bringing it back just for you. All right, let's do some question and answers because, as I said, this is an interactive process. We want to hear from you guys and gals. Special shout out to the Lady Reefers watching us tonight. Hence, bring your friends. We need more Lady Reefers. I'm going to answer a couple questions here. So if you have a question about your tank, reef keeping in general, fire it away in the comments over there. And uh, I'll pick a couple of these at random and see what we got. Let's see. Who's got a question? <laughs> Pirate Octopus. You got that, Greg? That's not a question. You have a request already. Goal Next trade show. Next trade show. Next trade show. Or maybe next, next happy hour. All right. So we're waiting for some questions. If you have a question, this is Q&A part. This is where you interact with us, not me just interacting with you. Fire away with your questions over there in the comment field. And uh, here we go. All right. Harkins Aquatics wants to know, have I used the hydros? I personally have not, but Ken, the owner, was walking me through one today because we have one here at saltwateraquarium.com. He was walking me through it. He was showing me how it works showing me the user interface, and I liked what I saw. It had some neat things that I liked to see that I was impressed with. So I don't have hands-on experience with it, but I have been looking at one. I have been watching things. Looks like a nice uh, new competitor in the controller market, so we'll keep an eye on that as it matures. Now, for those of you that are looking at the Hydros, don't forget there's also the Hydros Wave Engine that's been out a little bit longer that controls your mass spec pumps, your ice cap pumps, and it gets rid of the power bricks as well. Now, it also controls your Ecotech pumps, your Vortex. Doesn't take over the power control of those in the sense of losing the power brick, like with the gyres, like with the ice caps. Um, but it does wirely communicate with the Vortex. So, a couple different options on the Hydros. Harkins Aquatics, thanks for the question on that. Uh, let's go back. All right, so here's a request about series. Thanks, Alec, for the question or for the series request. He wants to do a series on setting up LED lights like the AI Prime. Okay, so we actually have some videos that we've done on the AI lights, setting them up. How do you do certain aspects of those? We're going to be releasing those on our YouTube channel before too long. So keep an eye out for that. It won't necessarily be a whole series, but uh, we will have some videos on that that I've done um, that we're going to be posting on the YouTube channel. So thanks for the request on that. Uh, Panda says that recently ordered a tank from her site. And it's coming next week. Awesome, Panda. Congrats. I hope you enjoy it. Always make sure you inspect the package, especially if it's a tank, especially if it's coming freight before you sign for it. Because once you sign for it, it's yours. If you say, yeah, the crate looks all right and crack it open and then it's broken, sorry, you signed for it. It's too late. So if you're ordering a tank from us and it's coming freight or it requires a signature, look at the thing, check it over before you sign it away. Because once you sign for it, it's 100% yours. All right. Becky wants to know, let's see, why does the water pressure through your RODI go down so much in the winter when it gets cold? All right, Becky, it's not so much a water pressure issue. It's that cold water. Now, my RODI unit at home drops by about half. My production cuts down about 40% uh, during the winter time. Um, so that will happen. I was talking to Ken about it today over here at saltwatercurrent.com. He's like, we don't seem to be making as much RO water as we usually do. It's, it's cold outside. What you don't want to do with this is take your RO line and put it on the hot side of the faucet. That will fry your RO membrane. It's not good for the filters either. Don't even try to mix the hot and the cold. Leave it on the cold. Just know in the wintertime that your RO production is going to slow down. All right, great question there. So, what's the... Ah, so, 
Here's a fun question, which there's a complex answer. Matt wants to know, what's the best way to figure out gallons per hour for UV sterilizer? All right, Matt. Fun thing about UV sterilizers are there's a lot of science that goes into them, and to get them really effective to do what you want, you have, a, you have to have a couple things right. The bulb's got to be clean, and it's got to be new. Old UV bulbs wear down. They don't produce as much light. Your coarse sleeve has to be clean. Then you have to get the right amount of flow through the UV sterilizer at the right wattage. So if you're cranking water through your UV sterilizers, there's not going to be enough contact time. There's not going to be enough time for that organism to get contact with that UV light for the UV light to mess up its DNA. So UV light doesn't kill the organism. It just messes with its DNA enough that it can't replicate. So for algae control, you can have a faster gallons per hour through your uh, sterilizer. If you want pest control, that's really like fish disease. They're more complex organisms, so you have to have more contact time. Now, how do you get the GPH right? The sad truth about this is largely a guessing game. You can do things like using a Neptune system's apex with the flow sensors to get an idea of flow, but really accurate flow sensors are quite expensive. I put some on a bill, just the sensor itself, just the sensor without the computer to drive it was $2,000. I'm not saying you need to buy a $2,000 sensor to get your flow right through UV sterilizer, what I do is I would err on the side of caution in the, side, in the sense of flow. Now, one great way that you can do this is to actually have a dedicated pump to your UV because then you're getting a better idea of how much flow you're actually getting through it. If you run your UV off a manifold, like your return manifold, then you're guessing about the flow rate. Now, you can't put a flow sensor on there, which is better than nothing, but if you're just having a bulb out and you're like, that feels right, it's leaving a lot in terms of error for that flow rate. So if you have a dedicated pump, the pump's going to be very likely close to that UV sterilizer. You're not going to lose that much flow in terms of head pressure or two head pressure. So if you know the pump kicks out 300 gallons an hour, it might lose a little bit of flow. So let's say you're cranking now 200 gallons an hour through that UV sterilizer. Now you're in the ballpark. You're going to get a pretty good idea of how much flow you're getting through that UV sterilizer. So great question there, Matt. UVs are something that you have to get a lot of things right for them to really to be effective. Here's a bit of insider information. I really only use UV on builds when I've got lots of water to look through, like a long peninsula tank. My peninsula tank at home is 12 feet long. When I look down the short end of the tank, I'm looking at 12 feet of water. I want that water to be very clear. Then I'm going to put a UV sterilizer in it. A lot of in-wall tanks, I don't necessarily put UVs on unless the client requests it because I'm not relying on a UV for algae control. I don't have a problem with nutrients in my tank and I'm not relying on it for fish disease control because I'm quarantining all my animals. And the chance to believe that a UV sterilizer can cure all your fish disease problems, that's a whole nother ball of wax or why that's bad thinking and why I don't recommend using a UV, relying on it for disease control, ditching your quarantine because you have a UV sterilizer in your tank. Horrible idea. All right, great question. So let's drop in on another one to get in. Let's go with uh, one or two more questions here. All right. So Fit Films Garage, that sounds cool, like home gym stuff, says, after battling, uh, beating a bad algae outbreak, how do I suspend other free-floating dead algae after I filter it out? Added a canister filter to try and polish the fine particles. Now it looks like snow in my tank. All right. Fitz Film Fitz, I'm thinking that's like fit, with a nice play on words there, Fitz Film Garage, adding the canister filter. This is actually a great way, a great use of the canister filter on a saltwater tank. You can put it on temporarily that has like a pleated filter in it. You want to put that in there, that will catch those fine particles. You're not going to leave it on there. You're just putting it on there to polish the water. True fact, back in the day when I had my first saltwater aquarium, 1989, it was recommended that I put a canister filter on my saltwater tank once a week with a really fine pleated filter in there to polish the water. My local fish store told me I could only run it for an hour, otherwise it would burn up the pump. So there you go. That's how we used to do things back in the day. Fit film garage, you can do the same thing. Filter out those particles. If you have filter socks in your tank as well, you can grab some of those, put those down in your sump. That will catch the particles, leave them there for a day, take those filter socks out, clean them out, bleach them, and run them again. Those are all great ways to help get those particles. And sometimes those particles are just going to stay in your tank. They're going to break down. I doubt that you have so many particles, uh, old dead algae particles in your tank that it's going to cause a nutrient problem and then cause your algae outbreak to pop up again. 
Great question, though. I hope you're enjoying your Fit Garage. All right, let's do one more question, and uh, then we'll keep going. Ah, speaking of questions, Kay Brown was asking me about this earlier. Nassim wants to know, what's the best way to gauge if your skimmer is working well? Is it the color of your skim? All right. Love protein skimmers. How do you know if your skimmer is working well? Number one, the first thing I look for out of a skimmer is it has to be producing some kind of skimming. Now, disclaimer here. When your skimmer is new, like the NIOS 300 that we have here in our saltwaterquarium.com studio tank, there's, it's got all that new factory smell to it. There's not that much funk biofilm in the skimmer, so it's not going to skim that well. So if your skimmer is new, I recommend pulling the drain plug if it has one on the cup or removing the cup if it doesn't have a drain plug. Turn it on and letting it just go. Maybe overflowing the cup, that's fine. The point is to get water and the biologics going through it to get the biofilm built up on your skimmer. Once that gets built up, then your skimmer is starting to skim. Now, how well it skims can be partly dependent on how much bio load you have on your tank. If you don't have much bio load, then it's not gonna have that much organics to actually skim out of the water. Therefore, you won't get that much volume of skimmate and your skimmate likely won't be dark. If you have a heavy bio load and your skimmer is working really well, you're likely gonna get that dark skimmate, the stinky stuff, the stuff that you can get in there and run your hand around the neck and it looks like sludge. That's another way to know your skimmer is cranking. Now, some people like to skim wet which is a lot of water in the cup, lighter skimmate. Some people like to skim on a drier side, which is that dark stuff, that sludge that you can get. What's right, what's wrong? Both of those can work. I run skimmers both ways. I like to be somewhere in the middle. I like to have to empty my cup about twice a week. And once I have enough fish in the tank, a good bio load, then I'm looking for my bio load for that skimmate to be darker in color. Now, here's one thing that I really like about skimmers. You get used to your skimmer, you know it's producing, let's see, you know, medium tea type color skimmate that has a certain smell to it. If all of a sudden that changes, then you know something's going on with your tank. Now it may change on the lighter side because your skimmer is dirty and needs a clean, but if something dies in your tank, all of a sudden you have a spike of organics, the skimmate can change, that skimmate color and the skimmate smell can change, then it's telling you something is going on in your tank. Then you wanna to go to your tank and get curious. So skimmers, Either light skimmate, wet skimmate that's lighter is good, darker skimmate is good. What I like to look for is a change in skimmate, then I know something's going on in my tank. It's a great clue. Your tank is telling you, giving you feedback, you just wanna to learn to listen to it. All right, here we go. That was some Q&A. We've got another Q&A coming up at the bottom of the hour, so if I missed your questions this time, I'll kill you for the next time. Let's go into a, oh, now it's back to me. More me. Product demo, let's go through some pump clean here. This is, um, Something I'll admit I don't do enough of. You've got a power head in your tank, even your return pump, your skimmer cup, skimmer pump. <clears throat> These things do need to get clean. They need maintenance just like any other thing that's running. Yes, you want to take them out of your tank if you got your cords nice and cord wrangled, cut out your zip ties or Velcro zips, whatever you use. Take this thing out. You want to clean it. Now, some of you may have your cords loose enough. You can take it out and put it in the bucket. Here's a fun one gallon bucket I did a Friday, Saturday morning quick tip on just a couple weeks ago. These work great for this. Grab your pump, remove it if you can, or if you take it out of the tank and put it in the bucket, that works too. I've heard of people doing that. I'm gonna be using the Cichet Pump Clean. This stuff works really well. One nice thing I like about it is this is environmentally friendly. This isn't some nasty chemical that you feel bad about dumping down your drain that might kill a small child or a cat. Anyway, so, <laughs> not that I don't like cats. <laughs> I, I mean a cat. There's enough cat memes on the internet. All right, so what are we gonna do? I've got the pump. I've got a bucket. You can use a five gallon bucket. You don't have to use that much water. Just know if you put more water in the bucket, you've got to use more pump clean. So the one gallon bucket, as you can grab at saltwaterquarium.com, is really useful. Then all you gotta do, is grab some tap water. If you want to use RODI water, that's good as well. Greg, why don't you come do a trivia question while I'm well, filling up my bucket? one gallon bucket. So, people really hated the jump scares during uh, Christmas, but only like two or three of them, and everybody else loved it. So I'm gonna keep doing it, jumping on camera. All right, so uh, Christmas trivia. We are not doing Christmas trivia, um, but the, the fabulous Bill Murray, oh yes. Classic like Scrooge, even a very Murray Christmas on Netflix. 
He stars in one of my close to my heart films. Wait, what do you win? I'm getting there. You gotta tell them what they win first. Groundhog Day. It was just Groundhog Day last week. What a great day! And God bless America. It was my birthday. Thank you for all the presents and well wishes you all gave me. Happy birthday, Greg. Well, thank you, Mark. All right. Anyway, so um, I lost my questions. They were <laughs> anyway. Make them up. You know, just I so much God, useless man. trivia. So we're gonna do some Groundhog Day trivia. Um, it's happy hour, ladies and gents. So we're gonna give away. First off, let's give away the saltwateraquarium.com beer pint glass. It is a pint glass. You can put anything in it. But if you're a flipping winner, you're going to pour a nice frosty cold beer in this thing. So to win the beer glass, answer me this, Batman. Bah, 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 bah. So in Groundhog Day, what is the name of the diner in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania? What is the name of the diner, Mark, in Groundhog Day in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania? I've seen the movie once. I don't know. you got to watch it every year. It's on repeat How because much? it's Groundhog Day. I think you could make... Like every month, you could have a, video, so, a movie that's tradition for that month. As many movies that you have watched, Saint know Patty's a lot about. Same next month, we'll have to get creative with Irish accents. Um, no, no, no. So, um, here's the first one. You got one? We actually have the answer. What is it? Jeff Vander. Jeff, that. what's the answer? He said Tip Top. Close enough. It's the Tip Top Cafe. Tip Absolutely. Top? In Punk Sunny. You know what? They did not film that movie in Punk Sunny. Imagine that. I went to Punk Sunny for my 40th. Three years ago. Oh my God, did it suck. It was great. Great in all the worst ways. 14 below, standing out in the field. Oh my God. But Punxsutawney, I thought it was a fun little town. Uh, they wanted, the filmmakers wanted Harold Ramis, the, uh, the director and all, wanted that uh, classic Pennsylvania uh, small town with circles and squares in the center of town. Gettysburg has one. They do not have one in Punxsutawney. So they filmed it in, um, oh my God, Woodstock, Illinois. I need to go there sometime because why the heck not? The Tip Top Cafe is there. Good job, buddy. How's Jeff playing with fries? Jeff, you are going to email sales at saltwateraquarium.com. Say, hey, I want the pint class. You know, this is my answer. Your, your billing information because Jeff, I don't know where you live, and if you want to drink a frosty frosty out of this, I need to know where to send it, please. So email sales at saltwateraquarium.com. Your mailing information. Good job, Jeff. By giving more stuff later, you're still doing that. We're just swamp clean time. I got my tap water. Time. I'm out of here. For the moment. Don't worry, ladies. I'll be back. Ooh, yes. All right. This thing's about half full of tap water. If you want to use RDI water, knock yourself out. You can do that, too. Grab your C-shape pump clean. This is a freebie, by the way, on the website, isn't it, K. Brown? It is. This is a freebie on the website, or you can purchase it either way. Whatever floats your boat. Comes with a nice, fancy-dancy little cup here. So I've got about a eh, half gallon of water. I'm going to get, eh, you know, around a, a scoop of this stuff. You don't have to be real scientific with it. You can't really go overboard, so hey, let's have some fun and uh, go with two scoops here. Then you want to mix this up. Oh. Don't use your hand. I got a ruler. A ruler? You don't want a ruler? <laughs> Where's the brush? Do you have a brush? Oh. Ooh. That's what I'm supposed to do with the brush. Awesome. Oh. I love live streams. After your kids grow up, you got baby bottles. Anyway. Okay. So you start mixing. <laughs> Just mix this up. It dissolves really easy. You don't have to go nuts with this. This looks more like a toilet bowl brush. I don't know where they got this as a last minute prop. Amazon. Amazon. Because right. there's Same they delivery at Amazon and Gettysburg in the middle of a snowstorm. Probably true. All right, so this is mixed up. This sucker is all dissolved. We're going to put the toilet bowl. I think I need to disinfect after this live stream. All right, that's mixed up. You watch the pump clean disappear. Take your pump, put it down in the water. Now, if you want to plug this in and run the pump while the pump clean is on in here, you can do that. That's cool. Just don't blow water everywhere because then your cat might lick it up and your cat might die. Okay. No, it's pet safe, remember? And child safe. You bring one of your cats and let's try it. Okay. Okay. George. So now here's the thing. We're going to do a little time warp here. Leave it for, if your pump is really dirty, you can leave it for four hours or so. You can watch that pump clean get in there and do its work. It'll take off coralline algae, calcium deposits, bubble algae, that nasty stuff that always gets stuck on your pumps. If your pump isn't very dirty, you leave it for an hour, and then it's good. Then all you have to do is take it out of the solution, grab your brush to help knock it off. This is a good time to take apart the pump and scrub the impeller. 
stuff isn't going to hurt your impeller. But if you want to get in there, you got the pump out of your tank. Go ahead and make the effort. Take the cover off this thing. And like that, boom, covers off. You can scrub this, throw it back in the clean. Take the impeller out on your pump. See this one, if you leave it for a while, it comes out a lot easier. Take the impeller out, scrub it. Get it down in the water. Again, it's not going to hurt you. It's environmentally friendly. Scrub this thing up. Get it nice and sparkly clean. And then rinse it off. You can use tap water. It's not going to crash your tank because you rinsed your pump in tap water. You can watch how those calcium deposits and other nastiness come off your pump. Pump, put your pump back together, put it back in your tank, and then be amazed at how much more flow your pump cranks out when it's clean. The stuff is super easy to use. It's eco-friendly. It's safe. There's no harsh chemicals in here. And it's a freebie on the website, or you can pick it up. Um, put this on your shelf, shelf life. I don't know that it ever expires. And you can use it. Cleaning your pumps is something that I recommend you do every six months. Keeps them lasting longer. Also, it's a good time to look over your pump. If you see an impeller that has pits in the metal on the impeller, it's an indication to you that it may be aging. You can replace that impeller. Good time to upgrade your pump as well. You're going to get a lot more flow out of the pump if you keep them clean, and they're going to last longer as well. So you can do that with the C-Shape Pump Clean. Grab it on our website. It's also a freebie if you want it. This stuff works really great. Thanks, C-Shape, for making this eco-friendly and easy on my hands as well. Safe for the pets. Good job there. All right. Here we go. Ooh. More trivia. Let's give something else away, Greg. What? We're gonna give more stuff away? I'm friggin' excited! I hope you're excited too! All right, so again, still sticking with the happy hour. We don't have any hard liquor. We're just drinking beer tonight. Um, we can do hard liquor later, I don't know. It's always the fireball shots during November. Anyway, giving away our dosing shot glass. So, see if it's gonna fuzz out on me there. Uh, not only can you dose yourself, you can dose your tank. Nice little simple teaspoon, a millimeter, and all the tablespoon uh, measurements and stuff. Another Groundhog Day trivia to win the saltwateraquarium.com shot glass. All right, so in his eternity of days, Phil learns to throw cards accurately. He says that you can become an expert at throwing playing cards. Throwing cards? Yeah, like, you know, like accurately throwing like it's a like, like bullseye in the Daredevil movie. I don't remember this. It was in the movie. He was teaching Rita it at one point. <laughs> anyway, Rita. And How Val do we know you're not lying? I think only you are the only person I'm on this whole live stream knowledge. who have seen it more than okay, once. So why am I, how am I not lying, folks? Before Kenneth... Randolph Rudolph Brown saved me from the scourge of public school teaching. I had parents all the time like, well, why'd you say my kid did that? How do I know you're not making it up? People, I got too much crap to do. I don't have time to make this stuff up. But I do know worthless knowledge. Anyway, throwing playing cards accurately. He says you can become an expert in this amount of time. How long would it take you to become an expert at throwing cards? Playing. You know how many people are Googling that right now and don't actually know that? That's because you suck. Oh. If you know it, then you're my hero. But if you got to Google it, hey, you win a free shot glass. So how long do you think, Mark? I have no clue. Guess something. It'll give them a hint. Five minutes. Five minutes? Did you see that pad fly? That was not very accurate. Is that your no. answer? No, it's not five <laughs> minutes. Anybody? 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 I'm going to keep the shot glass. It's a number of months. He's that stuck there for an eternity. Now that's the fun thing about months? the movie. That originally they wanted to start the movie in the middle of the time loop, so you didn't know how long he had been there. Folks have tried to watch the movie and figure out how many days, weeks, months, years. There's been no real definitive answer of how long he's stuck in the time loop, but they are saying it's at least hundreds of years. You don't see the accurate number of days in the movie. Okay. Okay. Guy guessed. What do we got? One end of the time frame. One end? You know what? This is going on long enough. I'll take it. Who's the random dude with one end? Jonathan Bradgett. Jonathan, what do you say? Six months. Three to six months tops, says Phil. So six <laughs> months, we'll take it. Jonathan, good job. Email me, sales at saltwateraquarium.com with your mailing information, and I will get that shot glass out to you. Am I doing the last survey question? Sure. Sweet. So, oh my God, Mark. Please tell me there's going to be trade shows this year. There, there is. Oh, sweet Jesus. How lousy I'm saved. Because as much as I like doing customer service, 
love doing customer service. Hey, try doing camera for a day. I'm, yeah, so, so, fine. Let's go to Fiji. It'll be great. Let's go to Fiji. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't get to go to, to Fiji. Fiji. For this job. I can't wait. Anyway, so. Um, I'm taking my wife to Fiji. You're going to stay at home. I look. I've dropped like 100 pounds this year. I will look so freaking smoking hot in a bikini. Not to me. Ladies. Anyway, <laughs> so train shows are, oh my God, they're, I think they're going to happen. Uh, Reef of Blues is saying they're on. There was just a frag swap down in Florida. A lot of our friends went to, said that it was really well attended. Who put on Macna, had all these calendars to uh, do. So we bought some cal uh, calendars from them, these coral uh, calendars. Um, they're 21, you know, we're a month plus, but it's still a really nice counter. A lot of different, you know, livestock shots and things like that for you there. Um, win yourself a calendar. It is, uh, it is one of our freebies. Free it is a freebie. It's available for sale. If you just need something cool, it's nice and small. It doesn't take a lot of space. Last question. The bed and breakfast where Phil is staying in Groundhog Day. Is named after the the, propri the proprietor, the woman running it, and you hear her name a couple times. She is named after a lovely Eastern Pennsylvania town. What is her name? I'll just take the name of the town too. Mrs. <laughs> Eastern Pennsylvania town. How many towns are there in Eastern Pennsylvania? There's a flipping lot. How many, so, other, how many of them have you visited? You're a road tripper. Uh, a bunch of Amish country. So, okay, there's a hint. It's an Amish country. Get yourself some butter. Get yourself a nicely made table. I thought all room. of Pennsylvania was Amish country. Except no. for Philadelphia. No. This is, here, more hints. It's kind of sort of near Philly. Anyway, Mrs. What? Named after this town. And they did it because they didn't film in Pennsylvania. And this town is nowhere near the river of Montetoni. How, how Montetoni do you know that part? Western. We got a winner. We got a winner. Our banter is done. Good job, winner. Who are you? Jason Cumby, what's the name of the town or the lady? Lancaster. Mrs. Lancaster, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Good job, Jason. Email Greg, salesassaltwateraquarium.com. Billing info that you won. Am I done? Got to go back to drinking beer now. You can drink beer and do trivia. That could get really interesting. Mm. All right. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> so you get to go to the trade show. Ooh, trade show. All right. And Fiji. Where did you come up with Fiji? You said you wanted to. I do want to go to Fiji, and you rub it in that I haven't been there in three years. It might be four. All right. Recap, for those of you that are just joining us, where have you been? First of all, we're going to do another Q&A, so if you have a question for me, go ahead and fire it in the comments. I'll scroll back and look them over. Reminder, right now, President's Day sale going on at saltwaterkern.com, 10% off all non-map items. We promise we will work as hard as we can to get your item out. Carriers have been slow. The weather is kind of working us against us this weekend, but we will get it out as fast as possible. So go ahead and get your order in. If your order is in, not in. If your order is not in, we cannot ship it out. 10% off all non-map items. There's some things we're not allowed in the discount due to the manufacturer's policies. They're not on sale, but hey, you spend your money and get your discounts. You can grab your freebie, like the pump clean, like the calendar, the shot glass, the pint glass, all that is freebies on the website. Let's go to some Q&A to wrap things up this evening. Fire away with your questions. Um, let's see here. MS says, give me something for free. You got to win something, man. It's trivia, dude. You buy something, you get something for free. With there you go. Order. You buy something, you get some kind of freebie level. Even, what, $20? You buy something for 20 bucks, you can pick a freebie. Here you go. Have at it. Um, let's see. Hmm. That's an interesting question. All right. MS wants to know, Back to the UVs. Do you run your UV light 27 or do you turn it off and on and how often? Uh, <laughs> okay, so do I run a UV? So I personally don't run the UV 24 seven. Some people do on a big system, a fully stocked system. For example, I, uh, I rebuilt a 6,000 gallon tank. We have 800 watts of UV. Actually, we have more than that. We have 1,200 watts of UV on that system. Those UVs run night and day. A little bit of insider information for you. Sometimes I would like to run my UV at night to help heat up my tank, to keep it warmer at night, because UV bulbs do produce heat, and they're cooled by the water running through them. So my tank at home, if I run the UV, I have 300 watts on that tank. It's going to heat up the water, so I'll run it longer during the day. 
because I want it to get that heat into the tank so the heater doesn't run as much. I understand I'm giving up. Either way, I'm using the same amount of power, but at least I'm using it on UV sterilization as opposed to just heating the water. So how often do you run it? I recommend running it at least six hours a day. If you want to run it on 24-7, that's fine. Just keep it on your temp. Make sure it's not heating up your water. Here's a fun quick tip for you. For those of you with an Apex and a UV sterilizer, make sure you have the Apex turn off the UV if the flow stops to the UV sterilizer. Either when the turn pump turns off, like if your return pump prints, turns off, you have your UV plumbed in through the uh, return manifold, the return pumps off, your UV turns off, or if you have a pump, dedicated pump feeding that UV, the UV needs to turn off, the bulb needs to turn off when the pump turns off because those things can get too hot. Some of them can actually melt if you don't have water running through them. So make sure you turn off the UV bulb when you turn off flow through your UV. Great question. All right. Blake Sky wants to know, will Acryl Nano 240 be a good powerhead for a 10-gallon QT, or is there something better you recommend? All right, Blake, a couple of things here. Number one, quarantining fish. I recommend that you do it. And 10 gallons, unless you're quarantining Nano fish, a little small. I like a 20 high, I like a 40 gallon breeder better. You can find an old 55, a lot of times you can find them on Craigslist. People say, hey, come get this thing out of my house, it's free. Those work great. You give the fish more room, they're gonna be more comfortable. And unless you're quarantining coral, flow doesn't really matter that much. I quarantine my fish with a hang on back filter on that tank. There's some amount of flow produced by that, but not a lot. Now, if you want to put a power head in there, great, it's not gonna hurt things, just, you don't need to put an MP60 in your quarantine tank. You're gonna blast your fish. You might expel more energy fighting the flow off that big pump. So don't use a huge pump. Lake Sky, if you wanna go with a 10 gallon QT, you wanna put a, uh, the Krill Nano 240 in there, that's fine. You probably don't need it, but if you wanna do it, it's not gonna hurt anything. Thank you for quarantining when I'm assuming is your fish. Again, I would like to see a 20 high, 40, 40 gallon breeder as opposed to a 10 gallon tank, unless you're doing some small nano tanks like you would see in an inner tank series. Ooh, all right, so here's a good question to wrap up for the night. Simon Chatfield, oh, that sounds like a good British name. What's the coolest or the worst hitchhiker that you've ever experienced? All right, Simon, I was just thinking about this today. When I used to buy Acropora colonies, I don't do that anymore because I like growing stuff out from frags. I would grab that colony before I would dip it. I would look down in there to look for acro crabs because some acro crabs are good. Some macro crabs are bad, but it was always fun to grab that colony, look down in there and be like, oh, look at these eyes looking at me. Little dudes cranked way back in the branches of the coral, just checking you out. Those were a lot of fun. You could never get them out. Like you go to pull them, they're just going to clamp down. So if I thought it was a bad crab, I would just go ahead and dip the coral. A lot of times the crab wouldn't make it. I'd be more concerned when the crab did make it. But those guys are a lot of fun uh, to see come in on those corals. I always enjoyed looking at those guys. All the wholesalers too would tell me they'd get the coral in from overseas, they'd open the bag and they'd look down there and they'd have all kind of acro crabs on it. So those guys are fun. Most of the time I leave them on the coral. Um, there's some bad ones. I've never seen any real definitive information on which one's bad, which one's good. So I just keep an eye on them. If they start destroying the coral, then I would yank them out of there. I just go ahead and rip them out of the coral. But there's some good ones that do good things for the coral. So most of the time I leave those acro crabs on there. True fact, you can actually buy acro crabs called trapezius crabs over there at Live Aquaria. Um, you can actually, they have those sometimes in their diver's den, so check those out in the invert section if you want to put some macro crabs down in your acros. Great question, Simon. Thanks everyone for your questions tonight. Thanks for being with us on our first ever happy hour. Should we do more? Should we do less? Well, this is a bad idea. Leave us a comment, drop us a note, let us know what you thought. What would you like to see different? We're open to feedback. Don't forget, we do three videos a week. We have three video series the React show on Tuesday mornings. If you want to submit your tank for the Reacts, saltwateraquarium.com slash Reacts has all the info in the form there for you to fill out. And we'll get in touch with you about submitting your tank for the Reacts. Thursdays, we have our Nano Tank Office Series. And then Saturday morning, your Saturday morning quick tips, quick information for your Saturday morning for you to enjoy your weekend and enjoy your tanks. Thanks to you all for being with us tonight. It was certainly enjoyable from my standpoint. We hope you enjoyed it. We will catch you next time. Keep an eye on our Facebook page. We will let you know. Also drop you an email as well if you've ordered from us to let you, let you know we're doing another live stream. Again, we do it for you guys and gals. Let us know if you liked it. What would you like to see more of, less of? Was it a bad idea? We should never do one again. We'll take it all the feedback 
We just want to hear from you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.